Thanks so much for joining me today to talk about radiation oncology for primary brain tumors. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. It's always good to see you. Good to see you as well. Let's start by defining what exactly is radiation oncology. Well, what we do in radiation oncology is aim a radiation beam at the area of a person's tumor with the goal of shrinking it and getting rid of it. Uh, no one knows really, even today, why, fully why radiation does this. But two years after Madame Curie discovered radioactive material, someone got the idea of holding it up to a tumor that a person had, and the tumor shrunk. Uh, now that person didn't do well because not much was understood about a good way to give radiation. Uh, but still, that began the field. And, and ever since then, we've been developing better ways to give radiation to try to control tumors. Let's talk about then the mm. use of radiation today in mm. primary brain tumors. Well, primary brain tumors are tumors that were originally arise in the brain. And because they arise in the brain, they frequently track through normal working areas of the brain. And radiation is usually done in, in addition to or sometimes instead of surgery because radiation can get tumor that may be hiding within working areas of a person's brain in areas that a surgeon couldn't remove. Uh, and tumors in the brain are not like breast cancer or lung cancer where a surgeon can remove large areas of normal tissue to be sure that every last wisp of it is removed. When it's in the brain, the neurosurgeon can't do that in many situations because it will leave the person with a lot of disability. And then they rely on radiation, what I do, to supplement the surgery to get rid of things that can't be safely removed or that may even be hiding within nearby normal areas of the brain. So you mentioned mm -hmm. surgery. So does radiation oncology in the primary mm -hmm. brain tumor setting usually work in conjunction with surgery? Mm -hmm. Most frequently, this is something done after surgery. Sometimes uh, most or nearly all of the tumor can be removed, and it's just in a sense to get rid of, uh, of bits that we suspect are there. Sometimes it's not safe for the surgeon to remove most of it, and radiation becomes the most important part of the treatment. The surgery is necessary even if only a little bit of the tumor can be removed because we need to know what it is. And MRI scans can show us that something's there that doesn't belong, but only surgery and getting a piece of the tumor for the pathologist to look at under the microscope can tell us what it is so that we know what the best treatment really to select will be. I know that there's an awful lot of individual yeah. variation, yeah. but is there a general course of treatment someone could expect? Well, in most situations, uh, the radiation has to be given little by little, as, as I said, to keep it safe for the normal brain that we're hitting. So it does become a prolonged course, often about six weeks every working day. So it is, to say the least, annoying to go through. Showing up for the treatment is bad enough, but the treatment itself, the person doesn't feel it. They're really laying on a table with the beams aimed precisely at them. A common question is, you know, how would I be able to remain still for that? But we make a mesh mask that, that will help the person remain still. It's not very uncomfortable. It's made of a material that gets soft when it's warm and then hardens when it cools. So it fits the person well and it's a mesh that the person can see through. And the room around the person is open. It's not like having an MRI scan, which bothers many people. With this mask, most people aren't bothered because they really don't feel closed in, but allows us to aim precisely. Another common question that our patients ask is, will I have marks? Uh, because people with radiation often need marks put on them to aim the beams precisely. But because this mask is so form-fitting, all the marks can go on the mask, and the person uh, uh, has no obvious signs that they're getting the treatment. And again, this is just a normal x-ray beam. So while a person is getting the treatment, they feel nothing. And we have music that they can play in the room if that, uh, if that makes the time fast, pass more quickly. 
and a typical treatment will be about 15 or 20 minutes, but most of that time is spent aiming the beams. The radiation is only being administered for a few minutes on an average day. How about side effects of treatment? Well, uh, on any given day, a person will feel the same when they leave as when they arrive. Uh, but as the weeks go by, side effects build up. Uh, the two side effects that bother most people uh, are fatigue. Uh, fatigue is the first one that builds up slowly. And that might sound like no big deal, but it's just a chronic feeling of lack of energy. And that can interfere uh, with normal life for a while. We have no medicine that really makes it better, but in the weeks after the radiation, that all gets better. Uh, and so to put it in perspective, a person trying to work during the radiation, well, few people can work full time. They have to show up for the radiation. But a lot of our patients do try to work. And often the first few weeks, they feel this is easy. And then the fatigue hits. And then it's hard to have the stamina to really put in a good number of hours of work. And with the fatigue, a person might become like any tired person. They don't concentrate as well. They don't focus as well. Uh, but then that all gets better in the weeks after the radiation. The other thing that bothers people is that most of our patients will lose hair, not all of their hair, uh, but some of their hair. And that can be noticeable for a while. For many people, uh, not enough of the hair comes back. Uh, but if it does come back, it takes four to six months. So that's another very irritating side effect. Now, a woman with hair like yours can often cover that up. But someone like me uh, and most men, if they lose hair, that will be noticeable. Uh, and some patients get more bothersome side effects, like headaches that bother them. And a complicated thing is that because we're aiming the beam right at the area where the tumor was or, or is, the same symptoms that the tumor had caused can come back temporarily as a result of the radiation because it's going to irritate that exact same area of the brain. So if someone discovered they had a tumor uh, for example, because their arm was weak, their arm could get weak again during the radiation. And we have medicines to help this if it happens. And I always like to emphasize this because it would be normal to panic. Like, oh no, my tumor must be coming back. But it's often really just a side effect of the radiation that's normal and goes away. It sounds mm. like the tincture of time is the thing yeah. to employ with regard to the mm. side effects. Yes, exactly. And so, you know, it's easy to say to someone, be patient, this will get better. And it's hard to be patient. But most of our patients recover uh, fully from these side effects. Uh, but there are some uh, permanent risks, things that tend not to happen while the treatment is ongoing. Almost everything that happens during the treatment gets better. But then there are things that can happen months or even a few years later that can be permanent. They don't happen to most people, but it's important for everyone to be aware. Uh, uh, things that are, you might say are really bad and permanent are uncommon, bad memory problems, damage to a particular area of a brain causing disability. Again, for example, weakness of the arm that doesn't get better or damage to other functions. Uh, injury to the brain causing such inflammation that surgery is needed to remove the inflamed area to make the person better. If you add up all the really bad things, that happens to a few out of every 100 people, a few percent, but it is a risk. But compared to the need to control the brain tumor, those risks are, are uncommon. And so most people go ahead with the radiation feeling comfortable about that. Then there are side effects that you might not consider uh, awful, uh, but can bother a person in the years ahead. Again, I mentioned that sometimes not all the hair comes back. And for some people, that's a noticeable sign that they've been through this. Uh, also, some people feel like they are not fully the way they were before, that 
their energy may be as not quite as good as they remember it being before any of this happened. Or maybe they feel like they're not quite as sharp as they were. And it's very complicated because they've been through surgery, radiation, the effects of the tumor, and maybe on medicines. But despite this, most of our patients feel uh, that they get back to a normal life, get back to their work, get back to their jobs. Now, if people were really damaged by their tumor itself, that may not get better. But in a situation where people have had their tumor discovered, they've had their surgery, and they're doing well, there's a very excellent chance that they will get back to their normal lives. Excellent. Mm. Thank you so very yeah. much. Once again, it's a pleasure to be here to discuss this.